optimization question, okay? And you can find it in Winter 22, Paper 2.1. So polarization is fairly new to the syllabus at this point in time. It's only introduced in 2022. So we expect the questions to still be fairly not familiar to us. So make sure you practice them before your paper. All right. So polarization is a phenomenon associated with light wave, but not sound wave. OK, so the first part, they're asking you to define or state the meaning of polarization. So when you think of polarization, hopefully an image will come to mind, maybe an image that looks like this okay so your light is actually traveling in all direction now when you pass through a polarizing plate it's like having a tiny little gap here and only the polarized only the light that is parallel to the polarizing plane will pass through okay so this is linearly polarized so sound wave doesn't have this because sound wave is a longitudinal wave Right. So if you watch our lecture video, there's also an explanation about that. But right now, we're going to try to write down what is happening here. What happens when something is polarized? Okay. So the first thing we want to talk about is when the polarization is when the oscillation. Are in a single plane. Okay. So Remember the picture here? So if the oscillation is in a single plane, means first it was shooting in many, many directions, and now it only passes through in one direction. Okay, so there will be oscillations are in a single plane, which contains the direction of propagation of the wave, of the light wave. All right. So you think about a light that is moving in all direction. And after it passed through the Polaroid, it only moves in one direction. OK. And this one direction is also in the same direction as the propagation. So you can see from this picture, it travels. This is a direction of propagation. So the light is actually traveling out. All right, so refer to the simulation if you need to. All right, let's carry on. So state why light wave can be plain polarized, but sound wave cannot. Transverse and longitudinal. So you should mention that light waves are transverse. Handwriting transverse. And sound wave are longitudinal. Okay, so this one requires some visualizing. You can check out the list of simulation that we have on our website or on wherever you click the link to watch this video. All right. Okay, so in this part here, it shows two filter A and B and they are polarizing filters. So if you've watched the recording, what we have is like a sunglasses. Okay, this is the first sunglasses. This is the second sunglasses that we are going to rotate. Right, so two polarizing filters A and B are positioned so that their planes are parallel to each other and perpendicular to a central axis line XY. So the central axis line XY is the horizontal axis. So you can see one is the vertical transmission axis here, then the other transmission axis is in this direction. Okay, so Unpolarized light of a single frequency is directed along the line XY from a source position at X. So we have a light source here. I mean, a light source normally, if you are trying to draw it, I don't have that OP skill to draw a 3D wave. So generally, we will just draw the wave like that to indicate that it's traveling in all direction. It's unpolarized. So the wave is sort of like vibrating in all direction. Okay. And the light emerging from filter A is vertically plane polarized and has the intensity I not. So whatever light that passes in here, it has a certain intensity. And then when it passes out, it has another intensity. So the one that comes out emerging is has the intensity I not. Of course, this emerging I not will now hit the second filter. 
okay filter b all right let's continue we are going to rotate filter b from the starting position about the line xy as shown in figure 4.1 so we are going to turn the second filter after rotation the intensity of the light emerging from filter b is i naught over 4 okay so if i go back to the picture and i draw this here the emerging part you know the one that comes out here emerging from filter b this one is i naught over 4 and it says that it rotates this thing. So as you rotate, the intensity will change. So if you try and put two sunglasses on each other as you rotate, what will happen is it will be dimmer and dimmer and then brighter and brighter. All right. So from here, calculate the angle of rotation of filter B from its starting position. So the first thing that we want to write is the equation for filters. All right. So you have learned this before, the Mellus law but uh, we expect you to be able to recall the equation i is equal to i naught cos theta <clears throat> okay so if you want to think about applying the Mellus law as usual this one requires you to understand how the equation is being used especially how the angle is being measured okay so in this case right when you want to think about Mellus law or the law of Mellus malus pretty sure I'm not pronouncing their names correctly but anyway if you want to think about Mellor's law again you know a picture is always helpful so if you look at this right you pass through the polarizer this is I naught this is identical to what is going on right now and your angle theta will always be measured from the transmission axis okay so you can see this is phi or theta is measured from the transmission axis. So if I'm going to just uh, maybe steal a portion of the diagram for the people. If you think about this, right, whenever you measure this angle, this angle is from the transmission axis. This is the transmission axis. So be very aware of where you are measuring the angle, especially when you use the equation. You think about the angle wrongly, it's GG. All right. So anyway, the incident here is I naught, and the one that comes out from here is I. Okay. So it says here that this one was I naught over four, meaning the intensity has dropped to twenty five percent its original value. And obviously we are looking for the angle theta okay so from here we will have 1 over 4 is equal to cos square theta and cos theta will be equal to half if you can press your calculator but I know that cos 60 degree is half okay this means that this angle here is 60 degree from the transmission axis okay so this is the final angle the final angle but what was the initial angle let's go back and stare at the diagram the initial angle right is flat leh. okay so I'll draw it for you here oh, this question is slightly cheeky la. it was sneaky you want to cheat your feelings a bit so your initial transmission axis is like this All right and right now I rotate it I rotate it so that I get like uh, six, I need 60 degree basically. So in order to have 60 degree, I need my arrow to be here. La. Okay. So this is the initial. And maybe I'll draw it so it looks like 60. This is final. The final angle here to here is 60 degree. So how much should we rotate? Not 60, right? Because here is 90 degree. So we should be rotating. Well, there are a few options. You could say, miss, I can just rotate. I can rotate one big round. Uh. Can. Rotate one big round. Here to here. Because I know this one is 30 degree, right? So I can rotate. So that angle of rotation 
would be we have rotated quarter two quarter three quarter so there will be 270 degrees plus 60 degree okay so this one will be 330 degree all right so we started here and then it says that it's rotating in this direction right so the only way to rotate in this direction is for you to turn one big round and reach 60 degree of course there are other options but this is the most true to the questions that you normally do lah. draw the angle starting from the trans the transmission axis so this one is the initial one so you can think about visualize the wave as the wave passing through this and currently your wave will now all go in this direction because they are already polarized okay so this one is i naught and then after that when it reaches here we are going to take a part of it and the angle that we want is 60 degree but it, is, it has to be measured from the initial direction all right now because this is the initial direction so finally you can then say the angle of rotation if you want to show that working just now it's up to you but i prefer to just directly follow the direction 270 degree plus 60 degree and that would be 330 degree the mark scheme gives several answers because actually what i really need from my filter right is just for this axis of transmission to go here 60 degree and my initial position was here is blue so this is the initial position so there are many ways for me to rotate from the light blue line to the purple color line although they did specify that the angle of rotation is here so your answer will be slightly more accurate if you use 330 lah. but it's not fixed one you can also say miss i cannot rotate here meh. can this is also okay this will be 150 degree right because this one is 30 ma. so 150 degree lo. or you can just take the whole thing you know starting from here turn all the way to here this will be 200 and not 200 this will be 330 degree up to you okay so drawing a sketch will be helpful let's look at the initial position look at the final position that you want want it to be seeing that it's 60 degree you can rotate two directions all right okay next part this is three marks i guess put 330 one mark is for you when you write down the right Mellor's law equation so the Mellor's law equation will be this one c1 and then the second mark is when you apply it correctly and you arrive at 60 degree c1 and then the final mark is when you know you're supposed to stare at the diagram start from the horizontal and rotate so either one is okay and i think they are quite nice because they also accept 30 degree 30 degree also can 210 also can basically they allow you to turn the opposite direction which okay sure all right so c1 c1 a1 my tip here is when it comes to this wave questions is be very familiar with the drawing so that you can visualize how it looks like okay so if not then you memorize the equation and you throw everything inside the final answer may not be the actual answer that you want okay part c a microwave uh, of intensity i naught and amplitude a naught meets another microwave of the same frequency and the intensity of i naught over 4 traveling in the opposite direction let's draw so we have one wave like that so this is uh, a naught i naught and it is meeting with another microwave with the same frequency so i'm gonna try to maintain the same period but it's less intense right this is i naught over four meaning this is a smaller amplitude lah. by how much i can find using ratio but i kind of don't want to 
So they're going to travel and they're going to meet in opposite direction. This, this one is a bit like uh, stationary wave. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Let's see what happens first. Both microwaves are vertically plane polarized and superposed where they meet. Superposed means they have interference done, or they meet and then they have principle of superposition. But in this case, they are asking you to explain without calculation why these two waves cannot form a stationary wave. Indeed, this is stationary wave. In fact, when you see the meeting after traveling in opposite direction, these are like flex standing wave, stationary wave. Question mark? Okay. But why can't we have zero amplitude? Pretty simple. Look at this. If I want to take this point, superpose with this point, they do not cancel out. One is big, one is small, because they have different amplitudes. Okay, so I'll say do both waves have different intensity, and because they have different intensities, since I is proportional to a square, and different amplitudes. Lots of explaining. So hence, the resultant wave the resultant wave's displacement cannot be zero. Different amplitude <coughs> So basically, I'm saying that if I have this wave, let's say this is A0, and then I have this wave, which is not A0, smaller than A0, let's say this is, I don't know, A0 over 2. So if you add together, there is no, no complete cancellation. Which is basically, resultant displacement cannot be 0. All right, this is A1, A1 this is B1. And if you mention that the wave have different amplitudes, this is another B1. So we are explaining to people why is it that when the when they have different intensities meeting, they don't cancel off each other. Because for stationary wave, you need complete cancellation. Okay, all right, part two. Determine in terms of A0 the maximum amplitude of the wave formed. Okay, so when it comes to stationary wave, you have a few uh, possibilities of meeting. You can have the maximum plus the maximum. Okay, so if this one is A0, I need to find the amplitude of the second wave. So I'm going to do that calculation first. A i is proportional to A square. So for the first wave, the intensity is, let's say, I0. The second wave, the intensity is I0 over 4. Okay, I'm going to use ratio. Huh? Amplitude for the first wave is A0. Amplitude for the second wave, I want to find, let's say I call this A2. Don't forget to square. Alright, so 101 over 4 is 4. And I bring over here is root 4. This is A0 over A2. Yeah, so I bring over this square root, this will be 2, A0 over A2, which means A2 is equal to half A0. So this amplitude is actually A0 over 2. How do I know? I just know that by calculation. Okay, so hence the maximum amplitude is equal to A0 plus A0 over 2. And this will be 1.5 A0. Remember in physics, we never write our answers in fraction. So try not to write 3 over 2. Try. Alright, so this will be 1.5 A0. Sidebar. If you are asked to find minimum amplitude, Then what will you do? You will have this wave meeting the other wave in the opposite direction. 
Okay, so this will be a naught minus a naught over two. This will be equal to zero point five a naught. Okay, if you need a visualizing of how stationary wave is formed, please try the simulation or watch the recording of the lecture. But the whole idea is stationary wave. We can meet peak to peak. We can also meet peak to trough, depending on at which point in time they meet. Because they're going to meet this way. All right. Okay. So that's it for this question. I think the only sneaky part is this angle, but it's only one mark, so you got this.